So this morning, we're on the restart, the press restart uh, series. It's one of two. Caleb's going to be speaking next week. But we're going we're gonna to do this uh, series, and we're going to start in Philippians chapter 3. Before you show the, don't put the verses up there yet, okay? Um, before you show them, if you have a Bible, it could be on your phone, it can be one of these. Turn to Philippians chapter 3 with me. So the Apostle Paul, this is one of the prison epistles, and the Apostle Paul was actually in Rome, in prison, writing to the Philippians. Up, at this, up to this point, Paul had experienced many, many things. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, right? I'm just kind of giving you some history here. And so Paul writes this book, Philippians has four chapters, he writes it to the Philippian church. And in the third chapter, Paul is talking about... Um, what his goal in life is. Like, as a believer, what's the goal? Like, why do all this? Why go to church? Why pray? Why read the Bible? Like, what's the goal? Why have a relationship? And so, in the beginning of chapter 3, Paul talks about that his desire is to have a close relationship with Jesus. He also says, Paul, the apostle, says, I don't want to put any confidence in my flesh, things I can do on my own, Although he could, remember? Very smart. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Like, this guy could do it. And Paul now has had his, after his conversion, is saying, hey, I don't want to do any of that stuff. And so I want to have a relationship with God that allows me to draw closer to Him and to know Him. So if you're there, I want you to look at verse 10 first before we go jump into it. Here's what Paul says. Okay, Paul is in jail. Actually, let's start at 8. Philippians chapter 3, 8 through 10. Paul is in jail, he's imprisoned, and he says these words. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ. Verse 9, and I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. Listen to verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Verse 11, in order... Ready? That I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Sounds kind of weird. What Paul is talking about, he wanted to experience the same things that Jesus experienced so he could co-partner with him, so he could understand what Christ really went through. And some of us, I mean, Paul went through it, okay? Some of us have gone through stuff. Some of you are going through it right now. Like, you're in the middle of it. And when I read this, I thought, I don't know if I would say, man, just conform me to, the, to your death, burial, and resurrection, God, and let me know what it means to be like you. I, I mean, you know me, right? I'm like, no, that's okay. Let's go to the beach and go out to dinner first. You know, let's not deal with that. But Paul, in his mind was really focused on the goal of his life, which was to know Jesus. Not know Jesus just in his salvation. Christ died for your sins. He was, he was buried. He was raised again. And because of that, we have newness of life, right? That's not what Paul's talking about. Paul's talking about, I want to have such a relationship with Jesus that I know it to the depths of what he felt during his death, burial, and resurrection. That's a lot. That's really, really knowing somebody. So we get to this passage, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 6. Now, this is a series, but I'm going to go through each verse individually, verse by verse. Okay, some of you love that, um, and I love it too, but we're going we're gonna to take them apart verse by verse. So let's read together Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 16. Now, you've heard kind of the background of where Paul's at and what he wants. Then he writes this, 
I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me, came into me. 13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let, listen now, let all those who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. In other words, you're entitled to be wrong, and God will make it clear, right? Verse 16, but we must hold on to the progress we have already made. Paul is making some pretty big statements here. And Paul is talking about his goal in life, pressing on, not getting distracted. Um, I was watching, um, I like sports, and I, was, I like a track sometimes, and I was watching, how many of you knew who, uh, Hussein, uh, Bolt, Hussein Bolt, is that his name? Huh? Hussein Bolt, everybody know who he is? Supposed to be the fastest man on the planet, I guess. But I think there's another guy that's actually a little bit faster. When those guys run, have you ever seen them run in slow, like they're running as fast as they can, but the camera is in slow motion on their face? Their head doesn't move at all, but their ears and their eyelids and their, like everything else is shaking, but their head is so focused on, I'm pointed that way. This is the illustration that Paul is using of race. I'm not looking around who's at behind me. I'm looking forward, right? To the finish line. Paul puts it in this context and he says, this is exactly what I'm doing with Jesus. I'm not getting distracted by anybody else. I'm looking at the goal so I can reach the prize. Let's start with verse 12. Paul pursues a more intimate relationship with Christ. Paul pursues a more intimate relationship with Christ. Verse 12, I don't mean to say that I've already, already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to the perfection for which Christ first, just first possessed me. In other words, pressing on, not getting distracted. There, Paul did not want to get distracted. Okay, so time out. He's in jail. How, how can he say that? He's in jail. His circumstances are horrible. And Paul is saying these words, hey, I don't want to get distracted even by this, even by jail. Right? Now, I don't know how many of you have um, been behind bars. <laughs> I cannot confirm nor deny if I ever have, and I won't. Um, but it's not fun, right? I used to work in the prison. It's not fun. Like, there's all kinds of distraction. But Paul is using this, like, don't, don't let yourself get distracted. Don't, don't allow yourself, don't allow yourself to be sidelined so that you don't get the prize. Now, um, there are many, there are many illustrations or many uh, views of what the prize is. And my, my um, opinion Theological opinion on this is this. You have to look at the context. Paul, and that's why I read the verses before. Paul is talking about knowing Christ in a way, walking with Christ in a way, knowing him to the degree that nobody else knows him. So when Paul says, I'm running for the prize, his prize is maturity. Like there, a believer is running, we're, we're doing everything we can, and we're trying to reach the goal. What is the goal? The goal is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Now, some people say, well, isn't the goal the rapture? No, nope. the goal is not a rapture. Believers, you already get that. You don't have to do a race to get the rapture. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Hoover. Done. Right? You don't have to, like, that's a, that's a benefit of being a believer. The goal that Paul is talking about is, I'm going to run this race and I'm going to do everything I can to be a mature believer. I'm not going to get distracted by the junk. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 uh, verse 1 says this, because we have these promises, dear friends, 
Let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work towards complete holiness because we fear God. As a believer, if you want to mature and you want to move on with Christ, you have to not allow things to get you sidelines. Sidelined, because we have these promises, you know what you have as a believer. Cleanse yourself from everything that can defile our body or spirit. Body. You know what the devil uses the most? This right here. What's between your ears? Don't let him get in. Don't let him get in. It only takes, only takes one thing, right? Paul saying, hey, don't defile yourself. Everything means everything. Should I do that? Okay, is that going to distract me from my goal? Yes. Okay, I shouldn't do that. Should I say this? No. Why? It's going to distract me from my goal. So don't say that. And the Spirit of God helps you with that, right? He's in you and he's saying, hey, don't do this, don't do that. Hey, why don't you do this? Because that's going to help you reach the goal. Paul wanted to make sure that his readers understood that he's not talking about perfection, because that won't happen until heaven. Amen? I mean, I wish. There's, there's thoughts out there that um, you can actually reach uh, sinless perfection. I don't believe the Bible teaches that. However, as a believer, you don't have to sin. <laughs> You have the power of the Holy Spirit within you that gives you the power to say no to sin. Now, are we still going to sin? Newsflash, right? Yeah, of course. Every day. Thought, word, deed, whatever it is. So, Paul's not referring to that. What Paul's referring to here is he wanted them to know, hey, I'm not saying I'm like, look at me, you know, man, I'm the guy. I'm perfect. He's not saying that. What he's saying is, I want to reach the goal of perfection, which is being conformed to the image of Christ while I'm in my human body. Now, that sounds kind of weird, right? What well, also sounds weird that the Spirit of God lives in you, but it's true. Acts chapter 2. Right? The reality is this. A believer has the ability. A believer, you and I have the ability to walk in this life with God and make right choices so that we don't sin. Now, I've told enough stories of myself. You know I do. As soon as I get in my truck and somebody's tailgating me, I'm like, I know I shouldn't do that, but they're really ticking me off. You know? <laughs> Paul wanted to make sure that his readers understood that. Paul, in his relationship with Jesus, was definitely pursuing a greater walk and knowledge of Christ and intimacy with Christ so that he could be conformed to the image of Christ. Well, what is the image of Christ? Read the book. It's in here. It talks all about him. He's loving, he's kind, he's gracious, he's merciful. Yeah, but I don't want to treat people like that. Okay, well then, that doesn't look like his image, it looks like yours, right? And so, us being conformed to that image is possible through the work and the power of the Spirit of God. And we're always growing and learning. And that's why Paul says, be mature, like grow up. Grow up. Don't act like a toddler. Spiritually, act like an adult, be mature. In verse 13, Paul says this, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. Again, he's reiterating, but I focus on this one thing. See how Paul's single-minded, man. I mean, he's, 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 he's lasered, lasered in. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. That is a great verse, and we love that until we have to apply it, right? Riley, you can leave, you can leave her in. It doesn't bother me one single bit. It bothers him, though, I know. <laughs> Paul refuses to look back. He's in jail, come on. And he's refusing to allow things that have happened to him in his past to distract him. This one thing I do, I forget the past, I look forward to what lies ahead. 
Yeah, but JP, you don't know how much they hurt me. Right, listen, you don't know how much they hurt me either. I get it. You don't know how much they hurt Paul. Do we need to talk about how much they hurt Jesus? Come on now. He, he, he's laser focused on this thing. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about because I think it's important is this, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up um, when, he, when, we, when Paul talks about forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. There's this human thing. Everybody knows I do counseling. I've done counseling for a while. Um, there's this human thing that we do, and when something is done to us, um, we get hurt feelings, we get upset, we get angry, and we struggle, right? And we try to fix them, those things, in many different ways. I think one of the biggest distractions of moving forward as a believer, you ready, is unforgiveness in a believer's heart. Paul says, what does he say here? Forget the what? Well, I'm sorry, what? Forget the, forget the past. Yeah, but how do you do that? They hurt me. I get it. I get it. I'm not saying you're going to invite them out for coffee. But I can tell you this. Forgiveness, here's what forgiveness is. It's a conscious choice to let go of the hurts that somebody has caused you. You have to let go of them. JP, are you saying that if you don't let go of the hurts and you don't forgive people, that it's going to hinder my walk with Christ? 100% I'm saying that to you. And here's why. I was there. Forgiveness, unforgiveness is like handcuffing yourself to the person who hurt you. Yes. Come on. We got to go here today. And you walk in the room and everybody sees what's chained to you. They can see it right on your face, right? We have to learn, we have to learn that there are things in this earth, in this world, the sinful world that are going to be done to us that are wrong. There are things that are done to us or said to us that are wrong. We're mistreated. And it's wrong. Jesus, uh, Paul says in Ephesians, forgive them just as Christ forgave you. How do you do that though? I mean seriously, I want to kick his teeth out. I don't want to forgive him. You know, I, 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 there's something in me that I, I, I can't take it. I shouldn't have been talked to like that. I should not have been treated like that. That is true. You should not have. But on the other side, are you going to allow that to distract you from your relationship with Jesus? Yeah, I just want to have a relationship with Jesus in every other area. But this thing, I got to drag along with me all the time. You know, we're chained together by choice, by the way. Now, let me just say, is that easy? Come on. No, it's not easy. I forget the past. And in order for us many times to forget the past, we have to forgive two people. Sometimes you have to forgive yourself for the regrets and the things that you've done that you could have done different. And you have to forgive others. Many times, it's the ones that are supposed to love you the most. Right? How can we do this? How can we actually forget what's behind? And we press on to the goal by recognizing what Jesus has done for you and what you have in him. That's the key. That's the key to the handcuffs. Now, am I saying, well, if I forgive them, then that means there's going to be reconciliation. That's not always true. There's not always reconciliation. Most of the time, forgiveness is for you. It's not for them. But Satan uses the unforgiven hurts in our past to distract us from the future. Start over. Let go of it.
person. That person that hurt you. Are you going to pay their rent? Heck no. They can do it themselves. If you're like me, or not. I mean, you know, you know, you just like, I, they could just, whatever. But see, that, that's part of the stuff. Like, to truly forgive means you release the emotions and the things that are tying you to the person that hurt you the most. Does it fix everything that they've done? It doesn't. But it releases you from the hurt so that you can move on with Jesus. And he can cleanse every hurt you have. He's got you. He's got you. I think many times about this, and I think, man, a lot of times we give Satan too much credit. You know, well, he's doing this and he's doing that. He's really not. He's doing a lot. But all he does is plant a seed of doubt in your mind, a lie of unforgiveness. That's all he has to do, and he sits back and grabs his coffee and watches watches you self-destruct because many times us we struggle with doing what Paul is doing this guy went through a ton he was beaten he was robbed he was stoned they thought he was dead all kinds of stuff and Paul's saying hey I want to forget what was behind I don't want to let those things affect me because I want to look forward to what lies ahead and in Paul's mind it was the excellency of knowing Jesus. What's distracting you today that keeps you from knowing Jesus? It, it, it could be anything. Like we have to let go of those things. We have to. Easy? Oh, come on. No, it's not easy. Possible, though, by the power of the Spirit that lives within you. It's a choice. Now, if you say to me, well, JP... I just don't want to forgive. Okay. Um, I'm speaking from the truth of the Word of God. And I'll say this. It could be that your unforgiveness is so deep that you're choosing actually to walk in sin. I'm not saying that you don't deserve something. I'm not saying that you weren't hurt. I'm not saying that any of that stuff. But we have a choice to choose to say, God, this is the hardest thing I've ever done, and I hate that man. I hate him. But I'm going to forgive him anyway because that's what you want me to do. Because I want to move on with you. You know how hard that is? Hard! Now, some of you, I know how it is. I... I've been around long enough. Well, I don't really have to forgive anybody, and I don't really hate anybody. And uh, okay, maybe we can be like you when we grow up. I mean, I don't know. I mean, seriously, come on. There, everybody has something. Everybody has something. I'm, I'm saying to you that Paul is calling us to say what the, the things that have happened to you in the past. Forget those things. How do you forget? You forgive. Does that mean you forgive once? No, let me tell you what. Forgiveness is a marathon. Every day. The triggers that come up in your mind. But we can trust God to allow us to let go of those things so that we can move on. Number three, Paul go, Paul's goal is conformity to Christ and to press on. Even in jail, even in your jail of your mind, he, he was free. He was chained in jail. But Paul was saying, I'm free and I'm going to conform myself to the image of Jesus. And I'm going to keep moving forward. I will not let the things that happened to me in the past define me. They don't define me. Jesus defines me. That's it. I'm in jail. I, things have happened to me. Jesus is going to define me. Now, I could get really ticked at those Jews that tried to throw stones at me and kill me. I'm not going to do that. I want to conform myself to the image of Jesus. I don't want any distractions in my life. 
and I'm going to keep moving forward. 2 Corinthians says this, verse 4, For our present troubles are small, and they won't last long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. When you go through a situation, and you don't allow that situation to sideline you, okay? Many times you're like, wow, that was pretty cool. Thanks, God, for allowing me to get through that. And that produces in you something. You know what we call that? Maturity. You're learning how to deal with the things that you can't change. And so you're trusting God in your circumstance. You know, I know some of you. I've talked to you. Your circumstances are bad. Let me tell you this. I understand that. I understand that. But I have a God and I serve a God that's bigger than any circumstance. Yes. He just is. He just is. Now, if you believe that, it'll make it easier. If you don't believe that, you're going to struggle. You're going to be chasing your tail. <whistles> Hamster wheel. Running, 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 not going anywhere. And you're worn out. Why can't I do it? And you come to church thinking you're going to get pumped up again. And then you go out and run out. Because you're tapping into the wrong power. You're tapping into the wrong power. The power you need to tap into is within you. The Spirit of God who lives within you will allow you to not get distracted. And will produce in you, the King James says, a greater weight of glory. Paul had every reason to not do this. And even though that was true, he found the one reason to, and that was to pursue Jesus. Which is, it, it's crazy to me. Let's look at um, this one. Paul identifies in this verse those that are mature. Like he's talking about this in Philippians chapter 3. And then he says to the Philippians, let, of, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. In other words, I'm telling you the truth. You're spiritually mature. You'll believe it. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. Now, I have been trying to work on my sarcasm, but this is sarcastic from Paul. In other words, you're entitled to be wrong. God will show it to you, right? This is a truth. This is a truth that will change your Christian life. It will. It changed mine. Understanding that I could choose to not allow things to tie me up and to handcuff me and to slow me down. I can choose to say, no, I know that was wrong that that happened. I know that that, should, that shouldn't have happened to me. I know I shouldn't have done that. But God has forgiven me and them, and I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to let anything get in my way. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. Now, if you're maturing, you'll work in that process. If you're not maturing and you find yourself in that process, have you ever been to the little story? Have you ever been to the grocery store, Myers, somewhere? And you walk in the front door and you hear this shrill of a child. You're at the front and the toy section's all the way at the back now, right? And if you're like me, I'm nosy. I'm like, you know, just go see what's, what's going on, you know. If you're immature and you're going through something, it's like a child throwing a temper tantrum because he can't get what he wants in the store in Myers. I, I don't want to go through that. I don't want that. I want this. Paul's saying, it, come on, if you're mature, you'll see this. Now, when I see that happen in Myers, I automatically, I'm old school, so I automatically think someone needs a, you know what? <laughs> That'll straighten the crosshairs real quick, you know. Don't do that. I, it's funny, I, I, I got to talk about my daughter here for a second. When they go to into the store, my grandkids are uh, spirited, very, you get that from her grandmother. Um, and uh, 
we're in the store and they're behaving, they're misbehaving, you know, as they do. They always want something because they need it. And I've watched Sarah. She'll see him, she'll go. And I can see her lips starting to quiver. <laughs> and they look at her like, oh, okay, I guess we shouldn't do that. <laughs> right? Think about this for a second. How does God view us when we do that? Like, I, this is too much. I just want to keep blaming them and harbor unforgiveness, and that's what I want to do. So, <laughs> like any other parent, I think God the Father will be looking at you going, and me going, you need a spanking. Amen. We need to fix that. Paul's saying here, don't act like a child. Mature, grow, learn, understand. Is it a long process? Yes, lifelong. It's not a sprint. It's not a sprint. But Paul identifies the mature in Christ. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on the things. If, if you're older in Christ and you, you've learned a few things, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who are over 50, 60, because I'm 57. 60, if you're older than that, you're older than me. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right? You've been through stuff and you've seen God change you. And he does that as you submit to him and say, man, I don't want to forgive them, but God, I know that's what you have for me. Don't keep living your life handcuffed to the person that hurt you. Don't do that. Handcuff yourself to Jesus. Walk with him. Now, does that mean you won't remember? Oh, oh. Many times, if you focus on remembering too much, the inevitable is you will go back. You hear what I said? If you focus on remembering too much, you will, in, you will inevitably go back. What does Paul say? I don't go back, I'm going forward. <laughs> So we have to grow up in this area. Start over. That's why we're doing this. Re like, let's start. Let's restart. Like, yeah, I've been letting this affect me. Okay, let's start over. God is a God of many, many chances. His grace and mercy can outlast you. But we need to start over in, in this area. The last one. Paul encourages maturity and unity. Listen to this. I love this one. I read. I kept reading it. I'm like, this is kind of weird. And I'm going to read it in a certain way so you catch it. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. What's he talking about? We. He doesn't have a mouse in his pocket. But we... must hold on to the progress all of us have made. Uh, there's a verse in the scripture that asks this question, am I my brother's keeper? 100% you are. Yeah. Are they struggling with unforgiveness? Jump in there, lean into them, move towards them. We. But we must hold on to the progress. We're growing spiritually. We're maturing. We've got to hold on to that. So if anybody starts to slow down, you can only go as fast as the slowest person. If anybody starts to slow down, move, move towards them. Those of you who are mature, move towards them. I always say the more mature, always move towards the less mature. Now, here, here's what I know happens. I've been in church a long time. And you see some of that going on, some of us. And what we do is, hmm, uh, looks like they're struggling. <laughs> hmm. I guess I'll just pray for them. And you don't pray for them. Come on, you know you ain't praying for them. You're thinking about what restaurant you're going to after this. Just like me. It takes a body of believers to do this together. When one person's struggling, 
The rest of the body should jump right in. Hey, you struggling with unforgiveness? Let's talk about it. Let me pray for you. Let me encourage you. Hey, how about reading this verse? Let's get together and have some coffee. The church that we want here is not a church that meets on Sunday. <laughs> now, it's good. I mean, we want to meet on Sunday. But our church, Rives, needs to meet every day of the week. Back and forth. Brent, how you doing? You doing good? You want to go? You want to take me to lunch? You know, <laughs> I'm struggling, brother. <laughs> right? That has to happen. And just so you know, that's one of the reasons why we switched apps because we think that app was going to help more of that. That's why we're, we're trying to mature us here. Letting go of the past, moving forward to what God has in store for you. You, if you hold on to the past and don't forgive, right, there are potential blessings that you're missing out on. Don't miss it. Trust God in it. He can, he can change you. He can change me. The question is this, though. Will we allow him, right? Will we allow him to do that? I hope, as we, you know, we talk about restarting and, and you know, getting a fresh start for this year, kids are back in school, the routine is you know, kind of normal, kind of. Um, and sometimes we hop back right into the same ditch we were in last year. Well, I guess this is just what I do. No, you don't have to do that. You can choose something different. So I'm encouraging you to trust God in moving forward in your relationship with Him and maturing you, whatever that means. Everybody's an individual here. Everybody has their own stuff. So it can mean different things for different people. But the thing that remains the same is Jesus and focusing on Him that can free you up from the chains that bind you. Yes. Let go of it. It's really kind of uh, relieving when you do that. I can remember. I can remember. I can remember thinking, God, okay, you win over this one. I'm tired of fighting this one. I can't win. He started to do things that I never thought were possible. Things started to change in my relationships and myself where people would look at me and say, that's weird. You never would have responded like that. Uh, the only credit I can give is to God, right? That's all we have. Remember what Paul said, I don't want to do this in my own flesh. I want God to get the credit. So as you look, I look to moving forward, I, I'm just asking that you guys would ask God, like, how do I restart this thing? How do I do something different this season as we move forward? Just, not just as an individual, but as a, as a church. We, I think about this all the time. How, what are we supposed to be doing that moves us to maturity in Jesus? And I'm not talking about coming to church on Sunday. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your relationship with Jesus Christ, Him and you. Him and you. Where are you at? You know He cares about that, right? So much so that He died for you. Amen? Some of you may be here and you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, dude. Jesus, yeah, I kind of believe that. I'm, I'm telling you this. This is the best message in the world. Jesus died for the sins of the world who needed redeeming. He raised from the dead, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. That is truth. That is the gospel. If you believe that, you're a believer. Now let's walk. Let's start walking. Right?